All right, in less than five minutes, I'm gonna walk us through making a minimal web API in ASP.NET Core. And to prove a point, I'm gonna try to do minimal editing aside from switching from this view to over to Visual Studio. And that way I can try to make my point that you don't need much time at all and you'll understand all the basics to get going with web APIs. So let's jump right into it. All right, so I have Visual Studio 2022 pulled up here. I have Enterprise Edition, but you can do this with Community Edition as well. I'm just going to go create a new project and I'm going to select an ASP.NET Core web API and in, that's in the list over here on the right. Um, in this example, we're not going to be making a Razor web page for the front end. It's just going to be a web API. So make sure to pick this one and we'll press next. We'll give it a name. I'm just going to leave it as default and put it in where all my uh, dumping ground for projects go. This next screen, you have some options. I'm going to explain what I'm picking, but if you want to change this up for your purposes, you're welcome to do so. I am going to have HTTPS on. I'm not selecting any authentication type. I prefer to use Docker, so I'm going to have this selected. I'm just going to use Linux as the default here. We're going to use minimal APIs, so I do want to have this box unchecked because it says use controllers and then uncheck to use minimal APIs. So that's what we're doing. And then enable open API support. I want to show this just because I'm going to remove some code. And actually, I want to talk about open API support in a later video. So I might link that right after this one. And then we're going to use top level statements. So keep this one unchecked. We'll press create. And I will make this a little bit easier for everyone to see, but we will jump over to the program.cs file. And I'm already about two minutes in, so let's go through what we got. We have the builder up at the top to actually take in command line arguments and create a builder that we can start configuring for our web app. And actually, just to show you all of the extra stuff that's going on here, we're going to remove it after, and I still think I can do this within time. So we can see that we're actually adding the stuff for the web API documentation. That's this swagger stuff that you see here. And as well, you can see that right here. So we're going to end up removing this. And I do want to use HTTPS, so I'll leave this line here. And actually, the rest of what you see here, aside from this app.run, everything else that we have on screen is legitimately just to be able to have an example API for getting weather forecasts. So if I go run this right now, we do get this API page from Swagger that has the documentation. We can press try it out execute it and actually get some responses, which is pretty cool. So literally within a couple of minutes, we have a functioning API and let's go back to the code and actually see all of the pieces that we can remove just to simplify what you need to have the very basics. So I'm going to remove all the swagger stuff. And we're going to get rid of this API. So we don't need that. And I actually don't need these other pieces on the minimal API that we have. And we can go ahead and remove the body of this. And we can say our test API. And the cool part is that you can return anything you want in here that can be serialized to JSON. So we can go make a new object. Uh, and this will be uh, like a, an anonymous object, right? So I can go say uh, name equals Nick. And if we go run this now, if we hit this route, we can actually see that we get back this object that has the name and Nick because it was serialized to JSON. And that's it. In less than five minutes, you only need a couple of lines of code to be able to go create your own web API. I did want to include some of the extra stuff so you can see it stripped away and only the basics remain. And in a future video, which I'll link right up here, we'll have another example where we're actually using this API documentation.